Hello and welcome to another tutorial for drivethelane.com, the world's greatest college basketball simulation. I am your host, Stoneman, and today we're going to be discussing recruiting basics. Recruiting is a bit of a beast. This will be a whole series of videos on recruiting. It's a big part of what we do as coaches here. Uh, it's not that difficult once you wrap your head around it, but to a new coach, it can be a little overwhelming. So we're going to dive in with the basics in this video. The first thing to keep in mind is that there are 256 college teams in the league or in the country, and each of them will graduate three seniors at the end of the season, which means there are 768 roster openings. Uh, conveniently, there are also 256 high schools, each of them with three seniors, for a total of 768 recruits out there. So let's go ahead and jump into my drivethelane.com uh, League 31 account here. Uh, you'll see the recruiting tab. There's lots of stuff to click on. We'll get to it all in later videos, but for now, let's just go to uh, the recruit uh, menu. Uh, you'll see here there are 32 conferences, just like the college game. Uh, there are 32 corresponding high school conferences. In fact, the same 256 cities are used in both college and high school, just to uh, make it simple. The one difference you'll see here are these eight regions. Uh, each region has four conferences in it, and this is used for uh, one of the recruits preferences, uh, which we'll get into later. So let's go ahead and click on, let's say, Conference 17. Uh, this will have all 24 high school seniors that are playing in Conference 17. So in this screen, you'll have the player's name, uh, their play, the position they're playing in high school, which is not necessarily the position they're best suited for. That's part of what you'll do as a coach is analyze their, their skills and decide where you think they would fit best on your team. For example, here we have a six foot three power forward, probably not where you'd see him fitting for your team. Uh, this column is their height then, uh, which team they play for. These three columns are their preferences, which we'll get into in a minute. And these six are the same stats you see for college players. These are their high school stats in the season so far. So if we go ahead and click on one of the players here, there's one more important thing, and that's at the bottom here, their scouting reports. So this is the same attributes you see in the college game, uh, minus intelligence. Uh, this is what the scout says about that particular player. And this column on the left is how accurate your scouting report is. All of these, just like everything else in the game, will range from none to excellent. So this good means it's a pretty accurate scout report. Uh, an excellent rating here would mean you can pretty much take these attributes to the bank, or at least close to it. A none or a poor means you might as well just ignore these. Uh, and then the column on the right here, another thing you don't see for college players, is a high school GPA and an exam score. This is sort of like an SAT score, maybe. Uh, it ranges from in the 20s to about 75. So uh, the higher the better, uh, the more likely they are to have a high uh, intelligence attribute once once they sign with a college team. So piecing together this information, their scouting report, their stats, you can start to get a feel for how good you think this player will be once he gets to college. Uh, the other big thing on this screen, I've mentioned them a couple of times now, that's their college preferences. Uh, each high school player has a set of preferences. Uh, these don't change, so no matter what human coach is looking at this, they'll see the same thing here. Same thing with the scout report, by the way. This does not change. There's only one scout report for everyone to look at. Anyway, the three college preferences, uh, we'll just go through one at a time here. The first one is local, and this says excellent plus. This means the player really wants to play close to home. So in his case, he's in conference 17. So if we go to this uh, screen again with all the conferences on it, you'll see Conference 17 here in Region 5. So at the end of the season, if multiple teams have tried to recruit this guy, they've spent the same amount of recruiting points on him, which we'll get into later, uh, he will break the tie using his preferences. So the first one is his local preference, how, how much he wants to play close to home. In this case, it was an excellent plus rating. Uh, so the best place to be in that case is in Conference 17. Uh, you will get the most points towards that preference. Uh, the next best would be in any of these other three conferences in his region. And uh, so they'll get a, a bonus, not as much as Conference 17 teams, but more than everyone else. And then uh, the other seven regions are, they, you know, are basically tied for furthest away. Uh, so they all get equally uh, no bonus there. It doesn't matter if you're in Region 6 or 8 or 1. They're equally far away in his mind. And conversely, if we go back to look at his preferences, if this were to say uh, none or a poor, that means he actively does want to play far away from home. So in that case, it would work backwards. 
the best place to be to win his signature would be in any of the other seven regions. The next place to be would be in one of these three, 18, 19, or 20, and the worst place to be would be in Conference 17. And with this local preference, it doesn't matter if you're in his hometown or not. Anyone in Conference 17 is considered equally close or far. So that's the local preference. If we go back to his page here, the next one says win. What that means is how badly this player wants to go to a winning college. Uh, so in this case, he, his uh, excellent rating means that he very strongly wants to play for a winning college team. The way this is calculated is based on the last three years of results for your college team. Uh, the most recent uh, season that has just ended is weighted most heavily, but the previous season and the previous season after are also included in the calculation. This is a win-loss record. It's also a winning conference tournaments, uh, making it to the highest possible national tournaments. Those all go into that win rating again for the last three years. Uh, important to note, unlike the local preference, a low, uh, you know, a none or a poor here in the win preference does not mean that he wants to play for a loser. It just means that playing for a winner is not that important to him. Uh, that's the same way that this third one works, the impact preference. This is how badly this player wants to show up and make an immediate impact, play lots of minutes as a freshman. So in this case, this is a fair rating, which means uh, that he does want to, but not particularly badly. An excellent means that he wants to step in right away, be a starter, be an impact player. A none, again, does not mean that he wants to go sit the bench. It just means that this uh, preference is not important to him. So now that you know how to see how the player is doing in college, the scouting report, the intelligence stuff, and their preferences, it's time to get into the actual mechanics of recruiting. So if you are a new coach to the game, you'll be running what's called a small program. Uh, you can increase the size of your program, which we'll discuss in another video. But for now, starting out, uh, you are a small program, which means that you get to spend 68 recruiting points per week. And for everyone, not just small programs, for everyone, there is a maximum of 17 points per week that you can spend on any one player. And you'll actually see this max, you'll see this used as a verb. So for example, in the message board, someone might say, I'm maxing uh, such and such player. Uh, what that means is they're saying they're going to be spending 17 points per week on that player. So if we come back to this uh, recruits page, Christopher Meeks, that guy in conference 17, uh, you'll see a drop down here for how many recruiting points you can spend. It goes all the way up to 17. There's also a shortcut button here to spend 17 points since maxing is quite a common thing to do. Uh, but sort of the essence of recruiting, if you really boil it down, is deciding how many points to spend on how many players. Uh, 68 points per week divided by 17 per player, that means you could max up to four players per week. Uh, this is considered a very risky strategy. Uh, the benefit of maxing is that, especially if you're going after blue chip recruits, most likely they will be recruited by other schools, and by maxing them, you ensure that you will be tied for the lead uh, as far as most recruiting points spent on the player at the end of the season, which means that you will be in the mix when that player uses his preference to decide which school he wants to play for. The flip side, of course, is that if you max four players, then you're only giving recruiting points to four players. So you're kind of putting all your eggs in one basket, or four baskets, I guess. And uh, what might happen there is that if three of those four players don't sign with you, then you will get walk-ons. Remember, there were 768 roster openings and 768 high school seniors. So they will all sign with the college, even the bad ones. So if you don't manage to land three recruits that you do want, you will get walk-ons that you most likely will not want. So it's kind of the risk versus reward thing here. Uh, maybe instead of maxing four guys, you only want to max two or three and spread some points around. Uh, that will be up to you to determine your recruiting strategy. One last thing to draw your attention to here is that the earlier in the season you start to recruit a player, uh, you will get some bonus points for com committing those points earlier in the season. So in week one, and keep in mind week one means actually the second week for the college season, the first week of regular season games, but remember there's a week zero, if you will, in exhibition games. Uh, no recruiting action needs to happen that week. So don't think you need to recruit during the exhibition season to get this bonus. Uh, wait until game two of the college regular season or game five of the high school season to, to start recruiting. And if you 
assign recruiting points for a scholarship, which I'll get into in a second, in that first week, you will receive 15 bonus recruiting points. So uh, for example, if you max someone and give them 17 points in that first week, it will actually show up as having given them 32 because of these 15 bonus points. Uh, if the first time you give some attention to a player is in week three, you'll get 11 bonus points. It keeps on dropping by two until the last week of the season where you'll get one bonus point. So last thing, I mentioned scholarships. You see a button here that says offer scholarship. As a small program, you can offer 14 scholarships. Uh, you want to make sure to save some for the guys you are giving recruiting points to because at the end of the season, having offered them a scholarship will increase your chances of signing them. But as another way to sort of spread some love around, you can offer those other scholarships to players. And again, in that first week, you'll get 15 bonus recruiting points for giving a player anything, including a scholarship. So uh, another way to sort of create a safety net, you'll hear that talked a lot about talked about a lot on the message boards is building a safety net. One way to do that is to give out some scholarships in the first week, and any player you give a scholarship to in the first week will get those 15 bonus recruiting points. So that's another way to uh, sort of alleviate some, some risk and spread some points around. So I think that is pretty much everything you need to know to get started with your recruiting for this week one. Uh, one more thing, if you like, you can go to high school team info. Uh, this will give you some more stuff uh, it will show you a general scouting report for the entire team. It will show you a team's record. So this is saying that Reading's high school team is 0 and 5. So uh, read into that as much as you like. This is sort of an average height for the team. Uh, this is uh, an average scouting report for each attribute for the team. So just uh, more info to play with. Uh, more information means better decision making, hopefully. Uh, I think that's all you need to, to recruit for week one. So uh, good luck and look for my next videos on some more uh, recruiting information for you.